Indeed, Axe friends, I am the man of constant sorrow. It's episode nine, and we're just now getting to handles. Handles. I love handles. 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 Handles deserve like 10 episodes. 10 episodes just for handles. But that would also be very tedious. Cook has a lot to say about handles. He has a lot to say about handles. He has passionate opinions about handles, almost shockingly so. I read back through getting ready for this episode and that guy goes on for pages about the evils of curved handles. Like this is a big deal for him. This is like gnawing in his consciousness and he left us a message for all time. He hates curved handles. Cook's theories on axe design revolve around a concept he really, really hits on heavily called the axis of lateral pivot, okay? Sounds very sciencey, sounds very sciencey, and, and to sum it all up, it has a lot to do with the center of gravity, okay? A line straight through the axe where, um, you know, the weight is pivoting perfectly around that point, right? It's a set, it's a lack axis of pivot, okay? And his arguments are effectively this curve at the end, okay, lengthens an effective length of your head. I know that sounds strange, but if you read through the pages a couple of times, that's what it is. Like It's like you have actually the head of, of mechanical motion up here is much wider, okay? And what happens is this magnifies any deflection error in your wrists, okay, over a straight handle, all right? And it can be as much as 200%, okay? Now we're talking millimeters, we're talking quarter of an inch type things, but the axeman's goal is accuracy. No wasted blows. He hits where he aims. These are like, these are the tenets of axemanship during that age, okay? And so his argument has, I think, some physical validity. I'm not an engineer. I thought about this a lot and I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. And I did some lateral pivot stuff with some of my favorite axes, and it certainly doesn't predict um, the kind of axes I like. I mean, that certainly wasn't like, oh, the ones I like are all like within this theory. No, it, that was not it at all. So something else is going on here. Long story short, Cook argues that straight handles are a lot more accurate than curved handles. And if you're going to be chopping all day, remember what this is all about. This is about the efficient axe. It's not the best chopping axe. It's not the most powerful axe. It's not a race axe. This is an efficient axe, the kind of axe that a professional might use in the woods all day long. And so those accumulative differences in accuracy over four hours, five hours a day, five days a week, 52 weeks a year, right? It's costing the company money. And probably giving you arthritis or something, right? Right? Up in the shoulders? It could be. Another important point that I finally got clarification on, reading through it, you know, very carefully, is that um, a straight handled axe does not have to meet the alignment test. Okay, none of his drawings in there uh, feature an axe that's going to come anywhere close to that center on the bit alignment test. That is a test only for curved handles. Okay, that's important. That was important because it's mechanically really tough sometimes to get that to work. All right, that's that that can be a challenge. And with a curved handle, it can also be mechanically difficult. Look how much offset here. That was necessary. All this weird stuff at the top was necessary to bring this particular head and handle into alignment, okay? So as we finish these acts up, don't really have to meet the test with the straight handles, but we do with curved. And since we're talking about handles, we need to keep in mind our Dudley Cook Axe Ring at the end and what we're gonna test all this good stuff against right? Because we have two pretty good axes right now. We have this Holtzbrook felling axe and the alignment's great, right? But if you remember, curvature was a lot, a lot curvier than uh, Cook's Cook theory and our viewer submission. She's a killer! Oh, look at that. Very nice. But a curved handle. That's all right in there. So we have a straight handle and a curved handle right now. Probably be pretty cool to make our uh, test subjects, one with a curb, one with straight. All right, so for our flying Swede here, our Montreal pattern, wouldn't it be fun to keep it on brand? Keep it on brand, Holtzbrook, 
This is an Atran felling axe handle. So the Atran, or Atran, I don't know how it's pronounced, right, in Sweden, um, is a 32 inch full size felling axe from their standard line. You can get the handles, so it's really nice. It's basically the same handle as an Arvika five star, but it's got the Holtzbrook branding on it. Good deal, good deal. And the way I see this now, if I take it all the way down to the shoulder, kind of all the way down and don't leave anything up there, that's about, that's about 30 inches, 30, 31 inches. It's looking really good. And what also excites me is just something about these Montreals, right? And they just sort of eyeball this in. I eyeball this in. We can get good alignment. It just, like, we can do this. This will work. This will work. But for our mighty main wedge, we really should get a 30-inch straight handle. That would be right there. And what uh, Cook's trying to say is an efficient axe. So a 30 inch straight handle with an eye like that. Yeah. Good luck. Go try to find one of those off the shelf. I think I have the solution. The Holtzbrook Serec Splitting Axe comes with a 30 inch straight handle, full size die, that's good stuff. I think this would work great. Okay, it cost me, but I got it here pretty quick. There it is. There's a Sarah Candle 30 inches, looking really good with our main wedge back in fighting shape. But we're out of time, so I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.